And welcome to ME470. This is going to be an example for class two. Here's a design example. Um, this comes from uh, MOT uh, example 5.4. And I have, uh, where is my MOT? I know I have that book uh, somewhere. There's spots. And here is MOT. All right, so this is, if you wanted to. Uh, some kind of text here. Oh, it says office hours begin in 15 minutes. All right, so this is Mott, and uh, this is the, uh, let's see, here he is, Robert Mott. Just so you get an idea, this is the source book uh, from which uh, this example comes. Uh, they do it uh, differently uh, than I do. Okay, it's here, dismiss the office hours. Um, we're going to use uh, closer to um, uh, ME for 370 uh, chapter 5 stuff. So this is a static uh, combined stress problem here where we want to design um, both the rectangle and the circular part of this bracket right here where it's got 250 pound uh, load coming down. Uh, it's 12 inches across this way, 8 inches across here. So basically we want to pick out the dimensions uh, and we also want to pick out the material. So. Um, so let's begin. Um, first off, it's good to start with a free body diagram so we can figure out what the loads are. Right? So we were given what this load is of 250 pounds. Um, so these are pretty straightforward and simpler ones. I'll, I'll start with the rectangular uh, section uh, design. and with an FBD. And we're going to make an assumption that we're going to take a stress, they already show us a stress element at A right here. Uh, we could make the case that this is sort of like cantilevered and it's really over to the side over here, but we're just going to do it from the center. It'll be a little bit more conservative. And um, so we'll draw the thing out as if it is uh, cantilevered out here. So we have this load coming down of uh, 250 pounds and um, so there's going to be a reaction right here R and uh, I decided to call this A that general location this B and uh, this C right there and um, there's going to be a reaction moment here like once again we're making it cantilevered because we're really cutting this apart and looking inside there to try to see the um, the loads and I'm gonna have a moment right here at A that's gonna be about and if you look closely they did label this as Z for some reason that Y and this is X it's not easy not easy to see that right in there so this is going about the X axis so that's M A X is the reaction right so this force is coming downwards and making a clockwise so this reaction is counterclockwise so the moment some of the moments um, about a in the x direction and remember that this is a general uh, thing you know that we're looking along there um, and maybe I'll even just like make this just about the x-axis right here and so when we look at this this is actually a specific uh, reaction moment M A X and it's positive and um, this is clockwise so it's negative so it's 250 and that dimension is 12 inches and like I said we could actually make it a little bit smaller because it's prob probably where we would see more stress is going to be like right in there because there's going to be a chunk of the circular part right here that kind of be reinforcing it but this is conservative to just use uh, that full length because it'll give us a larger moment and so we found that MAX is going to be 3,000 inch pounds. Um, now, and, and this is very, this is sort of like a simple um, design problem. That's why we're uh, going through it. To pick the material, let's stick with um, what we have in Shigley. All right, so here is our Shigley. Uh, this is the 10th edition. Uh, well used 10th edition and we'll flip to the back and just stick with the stuff that we know um, I decided just some for some variety 
uh, to go with um, something here on, okay, what did I say? Yeah, I decided to go with something over in this page right here. Um, it depends on what the application of it is. There's some materials that get used for uh, certain things. Um, for instance, I wanted to uh, maybe expose you to some other things in the, um, let's see, I think I could go to here under my useful links and resources, right in there. Um, there's structural steel cross-sectional properties. Uh, there's some things that you might want to use here. Uh, there's links right there. Um, books. I'm looking for, I think it's under materials, material selection. I think I have this excerpt um, that I placed at the end right here. Materials appendix excerpt from Fair's Design. Um, this is a book that I used in undergrad. This book right here. Um, let me go back to my camera so you can see that this is uh, Fairs, uh, Virgil Fairs. There's the, uh, the guy. This is actually a really old book that's out of print, um, but it was uh, it was it was old when I was using it. So like I was using it in 1990 or thereabouts, or maybe it was 91, 92, and. Um, you can see that I think the copyright on this is 1965, yeah. So, um, but in the appendix it had this, um, for materials, it, you know, useful to, to us. I'll just go back to my, um, where I've scanned uh, that page uh, for you here. Um, you can see that a couple pages down in here, it's got this nice little section over here, right? So um, it's got various different materials, but it has this nice thing with some typical uses. Now, as a designer, you, or for a particular industry, or you know, you you will have certain materials that are like, well, you know, oh, we usually use this right here. So here's a nice one for shafts and for gears, large shafts tools, um, various things. Um, it'd be nice if there were more resources like this right here. But I went ahead and I don't think I based it on anything here. Maybe maybe I had like your machinery parts right there. I had uh, 1030 is what I decided to use. Okay. And I didn't do as rolled. I went ahead and did annealed. I think 1030 uh, annealed. Okay. So out of the book right here, that would be 1030 and annealed. And I had, um, let me double check, 46 KSI is the yield. And, and the ultimate is 62. We don't need the ultimate in this case, but if we were doing fatigue, we would. So that was the uh, choice that I made, the design choice uh, that I made. So, um, and I'm trying to uh, document my uh, my choices here material is AISI 1030 and by the way that 30 says the amount of carbon content in here and then we are annealed that's the heat treatment of this and we end up with a, a yield strength of 46 KSI and if you've had me for class before you'll notice that I often will go with a very more generic uh, steel a, uh, a ASTM a 36 which is kind of different because it's like more like a family of steels uh, like you know it, it allows the, the foundry to pick out and this they just say a 36 it has this range of properties with a minimum yield strength of 36 KSI so this is stronger than a 36 um, and then we're going to also, we need to also assume something. It hasn't told us what the factor of safety is going to be. So we're going to have to uh, assume a factor of safety. And that has a lot to do with the application and the uncertainties, um, the uncertainties of the load, the uncertainties of the material. If you're, you know, getting it where, where you're getting the sourcing material, um, it also depends on um, like what are the consequences of this thing failing and in failing in this case we're going to say is based on yield right so we have a factor of safety of two um, based on yield 
So we're considering that yield is going to be uh, considered failure. Um, that's not always the case. Something can bend a little bit, and that's fine. You know, it's just a wear and tear of the thing. Um, so this is pure bending uh, when it comes to the rectangle. Um, so what we're going to do is, okay, first off, when we have the material and we have this, we now can say the allowable stress is going to be the yield strength divided by the safety factor, or 46 divided by 2, and that's going to be 23. I should have been able to do that in my head, right? Um, and then we're going to have, so the uh, stress that would be on here is MC over I. Um, quite often when we're doing this backwards right here, it's nice to combine those two things together. So we're going to use the capital Z with a line through it um, as the section modulus, right? Which is defined as the moment of inertia divided by the distance to the outside fiber. Um, and uh, so, so what we would find right here, if we were to turn this thing around, we would say the minimum section modulus is going to be equal to the moment divided by the allowable stress right there. And we're going to get it and say that it's 3,000 inch pounds divided by uh, 23,000 KSI, well, PSI, sorry. So this, the, these units will work out. These are inch pounds. These are pounds per square inch. And what we're going to get is 0 0.1304 inches cubed. Right here. Now, it's not a volume. It's just this is what section modulus is, uh, um, units uh, turn out to be. For a rectangular part right here, we will find that the cross-section I is BH cubed over 12. Right. Now, um, in order to decide how, uh, what this B and this H is, let's say that it just makes sense that some ratio uh, we, we might want to have. All right. Well, first off, okay, let me, let me uh, take our Z is going to be, we know that's going to be I divided by uh, C, right? And uh, C in this rectangle right here is really going to be, right, if this is B and this is H, C is going to be H over 2, right? So uh, we can go B H cubed over 12 divided by H over 2, right, is our C. So we end up with B H squared over 6. And now we have to make a decision what is the ratio of H to B? What is, what is a sensible ratio? Well, let's just say the way that I, I drew it right here, right? That, that's just my gut feeling was that it would look something like this. So I made this three to one, right? So I said, um, and let me switch over to my next page right here. I made the decision that H was equal to three times B right there. And so if I do that and I stick those back in there and I go B and then I go 3B squared over 6, I end up with 1.5B cubed for my Z. So now my Z can be equal to, um, or actually let me do it the other way. I can make... Um, <clears throat> If, if I set that equal right here, I can find B, right? I could divide this by 1.5 and take the cube root. So I could just go ahead and write down what my B is going to be. And that's going to be 0 0.4430 uh, inches. And therefore, my H is going to be um, 0. Point, uh, so it's going to be three times that, uh, so which ends up being 1.5. 3 to 9 inches. Well, it doesn't make a lot of sense to make it, you know, exactly this right here, but you could. Um, this is this could be 0.4375. Uh, my recollection that comes out to some kind of uh, fraction, right? Uh, 0.4375 times 16. Yeah, that's 7 sixteenths. Yeah. Um, so it's close. 
Uh, and then this one maybe is 1.5. Let's go ahead and make this 0.5 by 1.5. That's bigger, and therefore it's going to be more conservative, right? So we will, we're going to say that the design of this right here is going to have um, B is equal to 0.5 inches, and H is going to be uh, 1.5 inches. Right, so that's the first part of our design. So now my office hours are starting, so I better log on to that um, and uh, maybe pause this video. Um, wrap this up right here. Um, so we, we got one half of the way through there. The next part of it is to go through the circular cross section. Um, I will do that in a separate video. So this is uh, part one of this. So thank you very much for your time and we will resume here in a second.